glad you're here today. Thank you so much for coming. Today, as you know, is Flag Day. And uh, as a boy growing up in Detroit, I have wonderful memories of my father taking my brother and sister and I downtown Detroit to uh, all of the celebrations uh, for Memorial Day and Veterans Day and Flag Day. And I remember him teaching us to honor the flag of our country. He was the one that really taught that lesson so deeply that it stayed with me in my heart. And what I've observed over the years, even as I've come to know this congregation, those that have given so much to this country are often the ones that show such great love and devotion for our flag and for our country. And so I thank you for coming today to the celebration of freedom as we celebrate our freedom in Christ and our freedom as Americans. With all that's going on across our country, I could not let this day go by without an invitation to join together as followers of Jesus Christ and as free people and show honor to the flag of the United States of America and to honor the freedoms that our flag represents. So will you please join me for prayer? Let us pray. We thank you and praise you, O oh God, that you love us so much that you give us the gift of freedom. We claim our freedom in Christ that you on the, in the cross have set us free. And in this country, you have planted us in a place that cherishes this great value of people living as free people. And so we do pray today for our country. We pray for all of its citizens. We pray for the hurts and divisions across our country. We pray for your healing power. Guide us by your power, by your Holy Spirit, that as we seek to live for you each day and be witnesses for Christ, you would use our freedom, our life, to serve your greater purpose. Join us now in this time together and inspire our hearts in new ways. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite, to invite you now to stand as we listen to our national anthem. This sanctuary has two symbols of freedom that are central to our lives. Our flag is a symbol of our freedom that we cherish as Americans. It is a symbol of the highest values that this country stands for and that we reach for as citizens of this great country. 
It's a symbol of freedom that men and women have bravely fought and died defending. And it is for freedom that people have risked their lives to come to this country. Today we show honor to our flag and give thanks for the freedoms that are guaranteed to all citizens in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. The freedom to peaceably assemble, the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, the freedom to petition the government, and the freedom of religion. Sometimes we take these freedoms for granted and forget how precious and uniquely God-given they are. The other symbol of freedom in the sanctuary, of course, is the cross. In this sanctuary and in our lives, as followers of Jesus Christ, the cross is the central symbol that commands our obedience and our loyalty to God. The cross reminds us that our love and obedience to God is always first. I want to share with you the words that Paul writes to the Galatians describing what freedom means for followers of Jesus Christ. Paul says in the fifth chapter of Galatians, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by one another. Our freedom from sin and death, what Paul refers to as the yoke of slavery, was won for us by Christ's victory on the cross. Christ's death on the cross cancels the sin debt that we all owe God and cannot repay. We deserve the penalty of death because of our sin. And yet we have been set free because of God's love and by our faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Paul says that we are to stand firm in that freedom. Do not indulge our selfish desires. Do not indulge the desire for vengeance. Do not submit to any and all forms of slavery that diminishes the life that God has so generously and lovingly given to us. But Paul makes it clear that what governs the gift of freedom is love. Love for freedom for followers of Jesus Christ is defined by our love, the love that we see and know in Jesus. Because we are guided by his love, we know that our freedom is not given so that we may do whatever we want to indulge our sinful inclinations. Our freedom was granted so that we might serve one another humbly in love. And that is what we see and saw many people doing during the hardest days of COVID-19, serving humbly in love. Nurses, doctors, and first responders were putting their life on the line serving others in love. Grocery store workers were helping us make our purchases and putting themselves at risk in order to serve their community. Neighbors were reaching out and picking up groceries for an elderly neighbor. People were finding all kinds of creative ways to encourage people they knew who were having a hard time by sending 
e-cards and notes and letters. But Paul's final words sound a warning for us as well. If you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Freedom offers us a choice. We can go down the road biting and devouring one another, or we can take a deep breath, and we can embrace the freedom that we have in Christ. Our freedom in Christ invites us to choose the way of love. Love builds up. Love looks for ways to serve. Love looks for ways to make bad situations better because it is God's love that shows up and heals the hurt, binds up the wounds, and reconciles the differences. Those of us who belong to Jesus Christ know that our freedom was given to serve and love one another as Christ has loved us. Love forgives. Love reaches out. Love says, let's look for a better way to face the tough challenges we face and work together. On this flag day, let us give thanks for the freedom we have as citizens of the United States of America. And let us be among those citizens that choose the way of love that builds up and repairs and heals. Join me in prayer. We thank you and praise you, O oh God, for the precious gift of freedom that you've given to us. Our freedom in Christ, won by his victory over death and the cross. We know that because we belong to him, we can face every tough situation knowing that your power goes with us and is in us. And so we pray as followers of Jesus Christ, you would use us in this time to walk the way of love and reconciliation, to reach out and to try to heal the wounds that are so deep in our country and in our communities. But we thank you also for the gift of freedom in this country, for the opportunities we have to live and use our life to make a difference for our family. We thank you for all the ways in which we can speak what is on our mind that we can worship the way we choose to worship. We thank you, Lord God, for this precious gift of freedom as Americans. Let us use it to build one another up and to make this country great. We pray, O oh God, for the leaders of our communities and our country. Give them boldness and courage and vision to lead us forward. And we pray, Lord God, that you would use each one of us, each in our own way, to make a difference in those places where you've planted us. We pray for those who are standing and defending our freedom today. And we pray for all of the, the people who are hurt by things in this country that have injured them. May those injuries and may those wounds be healed by the love that we have for each other and love for you. And so as we gather today to celebrate our freedom, we vow to use our lives to make a difference according to your purpose and will. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I think we've all seen the expression that the price of freedom is responsibility. I think it's certainly true today. Each one of us as citizens of this country and as followers of Jesus Christ have a responsibility to use our life and our love to make a difference in the places where God sends us. So I hope that this will be a day in which you give thanks to God in the deepest possible way for the freedom and the gifts that God has given to each one of us. They are so precious. And that you will use your life responsibly, prayerfully, faithfully 
to serve God's purpose in this time. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and forever. Amen.